Judy and other, of course, uh, Nadia and Judith and all the others. Thank you so much for coming here and thank you for inviting me to speak here. But I have only one question to Nadia. How long do you want me to speak? <laughs> because you, because uh, university teachers usually speak in segments of an hour and a half. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I visited the United States of America uh, some dozens of times since 2006 when I started my speaking tours in the United States. And I met with thousands of Americans, mostly Jewish, but not only. But I don't, of course, I don't remember them all because it's impossible. I, I have, by the way, a very weak memory. I forgot the ring to my wedding. <laughs> but it's okay. We are married. Until today, Raina, my she who must be obeyed, never forgot and never forgave me for that. <laughs> but we'll leave with this. Uh, I met with uh, uh, many American Jews or Jewish Americans. I don't know. Everybody defines himself differently. Uh, but I remember very few people because very few people uh, made a big impression on me, those who were listening and sometimes talking to me. Uh, one of them was Judy. You could sense the power, the, how resolute she was. Helen. 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 Oh, Judy as well. <laughs> Helen as well. Uh, how resolute she was, how opinionated she was and how knowledgeable because knowledge is power of course there are others like this like ken abramovitz uh, evelyn hyas when he was here uh, of course there are stephen stern a good friend of mine and some others definitely but i think that uh, uh, helen was i think one of the most powerful personalities which I made, which I met uh, in my tours in the United States. May she rest in peace. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow will be the 15th of October. The world will pass another day and the world did, will not pay attention to this time or to this date. Tomorrow, the Islamic world will celebrate two months of the big achievement, big victory, which they had in the 15th of August, two months ago, when the most powerful, or the allegedly most powerful superpower in the world ran away from Kabul only because some barefoot, almost without any you know, weapons, only some machine guns and that's it, group of Muslims succeeded to bring America to its knees. This is how they see it and they have a point because this is actually what happened. The most powerful superpower in the world succeeded after 20 years of attempts to tame those people and to convince them to move from the Middle Ages thinking of Islam, from the tribal behavior of Afghanistan to bring them to, mo to modernity, to think like Americans, to behave like Westerners and to embrace the values and the mindset of normal people, as the Americans keep saying. This was a failure from the beginning. I myself, I, I met with one of the advisors of, of the State Department. It was 2010 
when President Obama those days gathered his officials also from Afghanistan and from, from Iraq as well to like a month of discussions in DC about the question what can be done with Iraq and Afghanistan which we didn't think about. So I went there. I happened to be in DC that, day, that time. And I met with one of the advisors of the State Department. And I gave him the idea, the most natural idea of the Middle East, just divide Afghanistan to ethnic states, just like what happened in the Soviet Union. You know, the Soviet Union was, uh, was dismantled to 15 countries. Uzbekistan for the Uzbeks, Kazakhstan for the Kazakhs, uh, Tajikistan for the Tajiks, Ukrainian for the Ukraine, and so forth, okay? According to ethnic lines. Ethnicity is still alive and kicking. I would even say alive and killing. If you create states without taking in account the ethnic divides, you create mayhem like Afghanistan or Iraq. Afghanistan, well, but both, both, uh, both problems, the same, the same problem. Because both countries comprise of ethnic uh, groups, tribes, religions, uh, sects. And nobody, nobody embraced the state mindset because everybody remained loyal to his own sect or religion, or tribe, or uh, uh, ethnic group. And this is the same thing in Afghanistan. So do the natural thing. Follow what happened in the Soviet Union. What happened in Yugoslavia? What happened in Czechoslovakia? The same thing. So logical. So he looks at me. He looks at me and says, what do you claim? That there is no Afghani nation? I says, no. There is no Afghani nation. No one, no one of them is called, calls himself Afghani. Only by the passport. There are uh, uh, Baloch, there are Pashtuns, there are Tajikis, there are Uzbeks, all, everything in Afghanistan. They don't have common language. They don't have common mindset. They don't have common history. They don't have common uh, 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 future. And they don't share anything except for the hatred to, towards each other. And this is the only thing which makes them together, fighting together constantly. And this is the, the reason why Afghanistan is a failing state, was a failing state, and will remain a failing state if you don't do the right thing according to the ethnic divides of this country. He didn't even want to listen. He didn't want even to listen to the logic behind this idea. And this is the core reason for the failure of the Americans First of all, to understand the Islamic world. Secondly, to do what is right to do in this unfortunate world when Islam as a religion failed to bring them all together under one ages as brothers to the religion. Because what we see today, not today, since 14 centuries, since Islam started, how they fight each other and all out war, only because, only because the Muslim Sunnis do not like the Muslim Shia, the Muslim Turks do not like the Muslim Kurds, the Muslim Arabs do not like the Muslim Berbers in, in North Africa, and the Muslim tribes in Libya do not like the other tribes who are also Muslim in Libya. So actually, Islam is the failure of bring them all together, make them all together, and give them the idea that you Muslims are all brothers. And this is, I, I, in my view, the main failure of Islam. And what we see today, the constant wars between Muslims, let alone the others, is the biggest failure of this religion. However, they succeeded in one thing to convince everybody that everybody is committed to the jihad. And the jihad is something which they are 
shared by all? Of course, when they fight each other, they claim that this is jihad. Because the, the, the fight of the Shia against the Sunnah is a jihad. And the Sunnah is against the Shia is also a jihad. Okay? Means a war for Allah. Or in the, the war in the name of Allah. Or the war fisabilillah. Means in the path to Allah. And this is the jihad. However, we as Israelis, as Jews, or Westerners, whatever you define us as we, we have to understand this jihad issue because at the end of the day, we are the victims of that jihad. Not only the Muslims, we are also. Why, what do I mean? Jihad, first of all, is a war, holy war. It was by the sword in the ancient times, and today it could be by the rifle, by the missile, by the explosive belt, it could be by uh, 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 roadside uh, uh, in, in explosives. It could be by any killing uh, 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 device which they use. This is a, the, the a jihad, the military jihad, which we all know about. And unfortunately, this is all what we know about jihad, because this is a military action against the infidels. It is correct, but it's not the whole picture. There are many, many other kinds of jihad. And every one of them is jihad. I'll give you some examples. First of all, there is an economic jihad. The BDS is viewed by Muslims as an economic jihad. And this is well rooted in the Islamic tradition. What do I mean? There is a question in the Sharatu Chuvot of the uh, Islam, uh, if um, somebody is going to, to the jihad fields, okay, to the, to the battlefields, okay, to the jihad fields, and he has to eat because it's far. So if somebody gives him food, how much of the jihad comes to the one who gave the food? Means how much the support, so there is a debate in Islam whether he has 25% means a quarter or a third. Means the one who supports the mujahid, the, the warrior, financially by giving food, he has, according to some ideas, he has a quarter of the jihad. Very good reward. And some, according to others, a third of the jihad. And what if the man who, after he gave him the food, he gave him also a place to spend the night and take a shower and rest for a little bit. And in the morning, he gave him also his horse to get to the jihad field faster and in a better way. So the debate is whether he has third or half of the jihad. Means that economic support for the jihad is a, it's essential and integral part of the jihad. Okay? So those who support the jihads by giving the money, like Qatar, the, the Emirate of Qatar, uh, which supports Hamas, for example, takes part in the jihad. And this is their mindset. It's not an economic support to the poor people in Gaza. It is a part of the jihad which the people of, Qat of Qatar, especially the Emir, this is what he's doing. By money. Those who undermine the economic situation of the enemy are also taking part in the jihad. And this is the BDS. So promoting the BDS, especially when two Jew boys, the producers of Jen and Barry, Ben and Jerry, no, this is Ben and Jerry is the brand name which I suggested to produce here in Israel. <laughs> ben and Jerry's don't get it. That if they boycott Israel or even part of Israel here by uh, not allowing the, the products to be sold here, they are actually taking part in the economic jihad against the Jews. They don't get it because they are too liberal. There, are, there is a political jihad or public jihad. An organization like CARE, Committee on 
American Islamic relations. This is kind of a politi po po politic, politic uh, jihad. In order to settle in the states, which is another kind of the jihad, the settlement jihad, it yeshvut, what they do in the states. And this is actually mentioned in a very important uh, uh, document which was found by the American authorities in Florida in the investigation of the Holy Land Foundation. They found the, I would say, the uh, operational code of the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States. You can, down, do, you can download it for free uh, 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 from the internet. If you Google um, an, an explanatory memorandum of the group, this is, if you download it, you can, uh, you can get it from the IPT website for free. And you can read it. It, is, it starts in Arabic, then it comes an official translation by English. It is PDF. And you can read clearly what is the goal of the Muslim Brotherhood in the States by establishing organizations like CARE, MSA, M M Muslim Student Association, and all kinds of others. And they mention all the NGOs which are working uh, 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 according to the tax exempt like 501c3, means they use the American money in order to promote the jihad against America by settling in America and forging organizations like CARE. And this is a political or public jihad as well. There is a media jihad, Al Jazeera, for example, which is broadcast by Qatar from all the world. From all the, world. The, the same country which sponsors the jihadists by money. So they have also, also a media jihad. And by establishing an English-speaking Al Jazeera, it is a jihad from inside the United States. It, because it comes, in, it comes in English. What is better than this? Al-Manar of, of Hezbollah, uh, or, uh, all the, or the uh, uh, networks, means uh, um, they use, in the media jihad, they use WhatsApp and Instagram and, and Telegram and all these applications in order to recruit people, in order to convince people to come to the jihad. So this is also some kind of a media jihad. And if you open a group of jihadists or to incite people to go to the jihad, this is also part of the jihad. Otherwise, people will not come. So it is a part of the jihad. There is a migration jihad. What they do today to Europe and to America as well, and to here as well. This is migration jihad. Jihad by migration. We don't have to fight them. We don't have to kill them. Let's just go there. We will have children. They anyway do not have children. The Europeans and Americans also, some of them, do not have children, at least not in, in order to keep the society alive. So in a generation, two, three, four, five, who cares? We will be the masters of Europe, and then we'll be the masters of, of America. And we are there. And the, the migration is part of the jihad. By the way, Muslims are, are very patient. We are not. We, are, we, want to be, we want everything to be instant. We want it now, because our clock ticks every four years, times of this, times of that. They have time. And there is actually a, a, a verse it in the Quran which says, Inna Allah, ma Allah is with those who have patience. And they have patience. There is a, a settlement jihad, what you see on every hill, on every place, here in the country and many other countries as well. There is the fire jihad. Would they, would they set fire in groves? And I'm not sure that in other parts of the world they don't do it as well. I don't know, but uh, the Notre Dame, if you ask the French who burned the Notre Dame, they will not tell you, although they know. There is the street jihad. What we saw here in May, what we saw in Lod, in Ramle, in, 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 in Yafo, what we saw in, in Akko, my friend Abihar Evan, uh, the, the, the one who initiated the Israeli space uh, 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 program, and there was a, a, a colleague of mine in Bessa Center in Bar Ilan. He was burned to death. Burned to death in this street jihad, which we had here in May. When they pray in streets, like in Paris, on other places in the world, 
This is another kind of jihad, to show the others that we are here to stay. You, you can't kick us out, this kind of, to convince the others that their game is over because we are here, we the Muslims are here. There is a, a, a conversion jihad. Unfortunately, if you, if you go to YouTube and you search, why did I convert to Islam? You will see how many Americans, Europeans, and unfortunately Jews as well. Why they migrate, and why they uh, change, change the religion and embrace Islam. And this is another kind of jihad in order to, they call it dawah. Dawah is invitation, invitation to Islam. It is another aspect of, of, of the jihad in order to convert the whole world to Islam. In Lebanon, there is a, the biggest construction company is run by Hezbollah. And it, the name of this company is Jihad El Bina, means the construction, bina, uh, the construction Jihad. Means construct places where you can live, you can work, factories, whatever, is a part of the fight for Islam. Because this way, you become richer, you have you, you, business, and you, 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 you settle wherever you are, and this is also part of the jihad. There is the drug jihad in Lebanon, in Afghanistan. They grow puppies, you know, for the Osnei Haman, <laughs> including, okay, for opium, hashish, and all the others, grass, they don't, in most cases, they don't use it. They export it to Europe, to America, to other parts of the world in order to weaken those societies so they will be, a, those societies will be a better or easier prey for the jihadists if they all become addicts to, to uh, uh, drugs. There is the, uh, the judicial jihad suing Israel and other countries in all kinds of tribunals in the world it's also kind of jihad, using the devices of the world against the Jews and against others. Another kind of jihad. There is the uh, stealth uh, jihad, stealing, bursting into houses, and, and th what we see here, much. Burning cars, taking cars, going into, bursting into houses, the birth jihad, giving birth. More and more and more children, especially in other countries like in Europe, in the United States, in order to grow more and more while the others are not bringing children to the world. There's another kind of jihad. What we saw, uprooting of trees. Another kind of jihad. Look, when they uproot a tree, they don't mean to uproot the tree only. They want to uproot the enemies. So the, but, but the enemies is too powerful, so they do to, to the tree because the tree cannot resist. And this is what it symbolizes for them. There's another code of the jihad. In 2002, I was watching Al Jazeera, the media jihad. Every Sunday, between 9 and 10 p.m. was a program by Yusuf Karadawi, the most powerful leader of the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, and he had a whole, a, whole, a whole hour in a program named Al Sharia Wal Hayat, means the Sharia in life. And uh, he was talking for like 15 minutes and then get uh, phone calls from all over the Islamic world. People were asking questions and he would answer on air. A lady calls, and this was the time of the Second Intifada here, in the, the days of uh, when we, uh, fortunately, when we uh, put an end to the uh, jihad who came from Jenin by getting rid of all those uh, factories of explosives in Jenin, Khomat Magen. And uh, a lady calls from Syria. She tells uh, the Yusuf Karadawi, the sheikh, look, I'm a lady, I'm a woman who lives in Syria. I don't have money, so I cannot give money for the jihad. 
I cannot take the rifle and go to the jihad against the Jews because I, I'm a mother of seven children. And I don't have anything actually to fight with. What can I do for the jihad? What can I do for the jihad? So Karadawi answers without any waiting. He says, dear lady, pray for the jihadists, for them to succeed. And this will be part of the jihad. And this is the prayer jihad. If you pray for them, Allah will hear you and give them success, give them the victory, the Nasr. Only because, also because of your prayer. So I say, thank you so much, Sheikh. You gave me a goal for my life, to pray for the jihadists. Ladies and gentlemen, jihad is not only by rifle or by explosive belt. Jihad is many, many manifestations of activity of Muslims all over the world, here included. But the United States are included as well. Always, I call upon my friends and my listeners. Ladies and gentlemen, wake up, learn about them, read about them, listen to what people who know about them tell you, and start to believe what they say. Because if they say that they want to get rid of the Jews here, that's the Iranians. They, what do you think they need nuclear bomb for? I think that we Jews do not have the luxury to interpret what our enemies say in another way rather than face value. We once did it some 80 years ago and the result was disastrous. We don't have the luxury of interpreting things not on their face value. Thank you so much and kol akavod le'afsi for what they do and thank you so much AFSI and the activists of AFSI for what you do and for what you are. Thank you.